Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday morning worship service here at Springfield Masonic Community. My name is Rick Tatao. Thank you for allowing me to serve as your chaplain. We have many people here today. I welcome you in person, and I welcome you if you're watching online. So before I begin with our sermon series, I want to introduce to you somebody I met in 2008. I was a new pastor in Xenia at Faith Community, and I met Keith and Barb Swiger. And 15 years later, here they are. <laughs> so I'm excited. Now, I told them they're not allowed to tell any stories about me. <laughs> Only the good ones. <laughs> so, we welcome me and thanks for being here. Nice to be here. So, I'm going to go over to the board just one more time. Look at who we've been learning about this summer. Who is in the middle? Jesus. Jesus. This is a painting of the Last Supper. Uh, wooden carving based on that painting. So, in order how we learned from back in July when we first started. We learned about Andrew and his brother, Peter. Then we learned about Philip, Nathaniel, James the Greater, John. And then we learned about Matthew. Did I say that right? No. I think I missed... Uh, did I say Nathaniel? Yes. yes. Okay. Then we had Matthew here, James the Lesser, and then last week we learned about Thaddeus, Jude Thaddeus. Today we learn about Simon the Zealot, number 10. So we are on number 10. There's only two more left after today. I do have a couple of announcements. Just a reminder, in October, on the 22nd, we will have a hymn sing. This is going to be the top 10 most popular hymns here at, at Springfield Masonic. So you can vote using these little inserts. They're in the back of the chapel, or they might be in your bulletins, too. Okay? So fill that out, and the basket is in the back. Um, on October the 1st, we will have church in the auditorium. So we're not going to be in this room. It will be in the auditorium, and I will remind you of that as we get closer. Mike has an announcement that relates to what we're doing today for Grandparents' Day. Hi, I'm going to be doing a recital here in the chapel from 1.30 to 2.30. You are all invited. In fact, I didn't know I was going to be doing this until a half hour. <laughs> but I'm very happy that I Thank you very much. Thank you, Dollar. How many people here are grandparents? Yeah, quite a few. Yes. Well, well, we're excited for you to celebrate as grandparents. We do have some joys and concerns, but I'm going to wait until our prayer time to lift those up. So at this time, let us prepare our hearts for worship. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let us join together in the call to worship, which is in your bulletin. Righteous are you, O Lord, and righteous are your judgments. You have appointed your testimonies in righteousness and in all faithfulness. My zeal consumes me because my foes forget your words. Your promise is well tried and your servant loves it. Let us sing Onward Christian Soldiers in your song room number 64 with zeal. <laughs>
joy to share. I have a couple joys to share. First of all, I want to point out how nice the flowers look. Yes. So this is Dorothy and Sherry. They came in last week and decorated our altar. So thank you. Beautiful. Also, happy birthday to Miss Karen, who requested us not to sing to her. <laughs> so, well, happy birthday, Karen. Happy birthday. We have a few prayer concerns. Um, tomorrow is 9-11, so please remember the people who suffered and died yes. on this day back in 2001. And also, you may not see a couple of our friends around for a few days, so Ken and Sandy uh, McGill are quarantined in their room for 10 days, so I know that we're used to having them be with us in church. Um, I'm used to having him light the candles, so Ken, they reminded me to do that, if you're watching. <laughs> so just please keep them in your prayers. And we pray for people who have lost things. We pray that they will be found. Okay, so let us enter into a time of prayer. Gracious and holy God, as we pause in our time of worship this morning, help us to settle our hearts and minds in you. We thank you for the disciple Simon the Zealot. We thank you for his faithfulness, passion, and enthusiasm in his faith. Lord, you changed him from being a violent activist to being a man of prayer. <coughs> Lord, forgive us when we try to settle our differences with others in harmful ways. In your mercy, turn our attention back towards you. We pray, Lord, that you give us a zeal like Simon to love you more fully, to contemplate your ways more deeply, and to serve you more faithfully. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And now as Jesus first taught his disciples to pray, let us pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us.
you hear a, an original piece of music. So thank you, Mike. Thank you, choir, for preparing that song for us. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, verses, chapter 22, verses 34 to 40. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Have you ever had a time in your life when you needed to make an important decision? Yes, of course you have. All of us have made important decisions. Important decisions are not made lightly. Important decisions greatly impact our lives and the lives of those around us. The Bible tells us of a time when Jesus makes an important decision. Jesus is searching for 12 disciples to follow him, to learn from him, and to serve. Selecting the right people is an important decision. It is not an exaggeration to say that who Jesus selects as his 12 disciples will influence all of human history. This decision that Jesus made 2,000 years ago in Israel is shaping our worship in Springfield, Ohio today. Jesus does not make his important decision lightly. So what does Jesus do before he makes an important decision. He prays. Who said that? Dorothy? Jesus prays. According to the Gospel of Luke, Jesus goes up to the mountain alone to pray. Jesus prays to his Father in heaven all through the night. When Jesus comes down the mountain in the morning, he is ready to choose the twelve disciples, the twelve people who will follow him. One man who becomes a part of Jesus' group of followers is already part of another group. This is Simon, and he's part of a group called the Zealots. In the painting of the Last Supper, Leonardo da Vinci places Simon the Zealot at the far right end of the table. A lot is happening at this end of the table. Jesus says, Very truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. Matthew and Thaddeus are looking towards Simon the Zealot. Now either they are asking Simon to explain what is going on as if he would know something, or they are accusing him of being the one who will betray Jesus. He is holding, the picture you can see, he is holding his hands up like this. What does he suggest when he does that? I have no idea <laughs> what's going on. Yep. Of all the postures of the disciples in the painting, Simon the Zealots is my favorite. I imitate this posture the most often. So a few weeks ago, it came to my attention that something in the chapel came up missing. <laughs> and they asked me if I knew where it was. And guess what I said? <laughs> I have no idea. Good thing somebody knew where it was and all was well. But the point is, when you do that, I mean, just don't know what's going on. So put yourself in Simon the Zealot's shoes. Perhaps he is being accused of doing something he is not planning to do. He feels defensive. 
He doesn't know what is going on. He feels confused. And he is concerned about his rabbi. He is worried. If you have ever felt a lot of different emotions all at the same time, then you can identify with Simon the Zealot. It was so much to take in, Simon the Zealot felt, I don't know what is going on. So what do we know about Simon the Zealot? First, he has the same name as another disciple in the group, Simon Peter. So I will refer to our disciple today as Simon the Zealot or Simon. The Bible calls him Simon the Canaanian. This is an Aramaic word which means to be jealous. Simon the Zealot is always the 10th or 11th disciple mentioned on the list of the 12 disciples. Simon is part of a group called <coughs> the Zealots. The Zealots are hardcore religious nationalists. They resisted Roman occupation with violence. They prepared themselves as if they were going to war. The Zealots believed that they were acting on behalf of God as agents of God's judgment on the unrighteous. In other words, they believe God is a jealous God and God chose them to destroy anyone that transgressed the law. In their belief, there is, all, there is no room for grace or forgiveness. The zealots were merciless against anybody who would subvert the law of Moses. It was their purpose to show God's wrath on the unrighteous. The prime example of zealous persecution in the Bible is described in the book of Acts. A man named Saul persecutes the early church out of his zeal for the law. Saul stands by and watches the stoning of Stephen, who is the first Christian martyr. It is on the road to Damascus that Jesus changes Saul's heart. Saul becomes to realize the one he persecutes is the same one who comes to save his life. Jesus turns Saul's zeal for persecution into zeal for sharing the gospel. Jesus changes Saul's name to Paul. Saul becomes the Apostle Paul. Thankfully, both Simon the Zealot and Paul come to understand Jesus' mission, not to condemn the world, but to save it. Matthew is a former tax collector who joined Jesus as one of the disciples. It is reasonable to presume that there was a tension between Matthew the tax collector who worked for Rome and Simon the Zealot who resisted Roman authority. It is also fair to presume that both disciples gave up their radical viewpoints when they decided to follow Jesus. Jesus teaches Matthew that God identifies with the poor, the very people who he was hurting through his work. Jesus teaches Simon the Zealot that it is better to be zealous for God out of love instead of judgment. One day we will have our judgment before the Lord. Jesus makes this clear in John 5, verse 22. The Father judges no one, but has given all judgment to the Son. One day we will stand before the Lord in judgment. It is not our place to be zealous about judging others, lest we be judged. Jesus teaches to love our enemies and to pray for those who persecute us. I can visualize Simon the Zealot laying down his weapons when he decided to follow Jesus invitation come follow me what does it mean to be zealous Flo said sing with zeal and you did <laughs> I love you. 
What does it mean to be zealous, to have zeal in life? It means that you give your best effort. It means you give 100% of yourself. Does being zealous mean you are pushy, annoying, or rude? Sometimes people associate being zealous with all those negative things. But that's not what it means. Being zealous means you are passionate, enthusiastic, and faithfully committed to your purpose. Jesus wants all of us to be zealous out of love for God. In our scripture reading today, Jesus is questioned by a teacher of the law. Which commandment of the law is the greatest? And Jesus said to him, now I'm going to leave one word out. I want you to fill it in, okay? You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment, and the second is like it. To love your neighbor as yourself. yourself. Good job. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now, does Jesus want us to love God half-heartedly? No. No. Does Jesus want us to love God when it is convenient? No. No. Does Jesus want us to love God only when we feel like it? No. No. <clears throat> to develop a zeal in your faith, to develop a zeal for what God has given you as your purpose in life, you have to be all in. 100%, not lukewarm. The greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And then go show that same love to your neighbor as you would yourself. Who is the most zealous follower of Jesus Christ in the entire Bible. I believe it is the one who was at first the most zealous against him. The Apostle Paul is the greatest evangelist the world has ever known. Hear the Apostle Paul in his own words from Philippians 3, 4-9. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law of Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish. in order that I may gain Christ and be found in Him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ. The righteousness from God based on faith. Here is a man who loves God with all his heart, with all his soul, and all his mind. Paul is zealous for the Lord. Like the Apostle Paul, Simon the Zealot turned his zeal for judgment into a zeal of love for God. That is why he is sitting at the same table with people who are very different from him, like Matthew the tax collector. Simon the Zealot is learning how to love as Jesus loves, with all his heart, with all his soul, with all his mind and with all his strength. May it be so. Amen. Amen. We have a 
song in number 77.
Oh, <laughs> <laughs> 